Hi everybody, uh, today we're going to look at uh, some of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the Bay Area and in California in general, um, but uh, we're going to go through and look at this map here and kind of study what's been going on uh, in the Bay Area. So um, as you can see, uh, there is a lot of wealth in the South Bay um, and there's also uh, quite a bit of wealth uh, in the suburbs here, kind of in the East Bay. Um, and then Marin has some wealth here, and then the tip of San Francisco does as well. So if you zoom in a little bit to this map, let me try to zoom in, if it lets me. <laughs> uh, you can kind of see some more detail about where these areas are, these neighborhoods are uh, per neighborhood, um, even into San Francisco uh, and the East Bay. So uh, we're gonna start um, primarily with San Francisco and uh, the Marin area. Uh, so you can kind of break up the wealth uh, per county in California and then also per city. <coughs> so both are very valid ways of looking at it. Um, it's really interesting to look at the cities, kind of get a microscopic view, which towns, which cities are kind of doing well. And then overall you can see. So Marin is the best uh, county in terms of wealth, uh, highest wealth, and then San Francisco, San Mateo, Santa Clara, uh, Contra Costa, Alameda, and so on. So a lot of these are actually in the north, in Northern California, uh, in the Bay Area, uh, incidentally. Um, so because Marin and San Francisco are the wealthiest, um, and uh, San Mateo and Santa Clara, we're going to start with those um, and kind of go from there and look at the rest of the areas relative to um, there. Um, so there's all different kinds of ways to look at the Bay Area, um, but basically this is usually what's thought of as this South Bay, San Francisco, the Peninsula, North Bay, um, and East Bay. So basically, um, the Northern Bay is generally starts uh, once you cross the bridge here, uh, but basically this is a whole different area. So uh, when we look back at the map, so in general you can see that the Bay Area is doing very well. Um, uh, the South Bay uh, in particular is doing very well. Um, surprisingly well uh, you actually find that uh, the income is actually even slightly higher uh, sometimes in San Jose uh, than in San Francisco um, or even in outside of San Francisco so it just depends uh, really uh, on the specific uh, uh, area um, but uh, as we did see uh, on average uh, Marin is number one so we're gonna zoom in here hopefully and uh, pan over to Marin. It's a lot of data, so it's kind of moving slow on my computer. Um, but you can kind of see as we zoom in here, this is the main crux of the Bay Area. Uh, you can see kind of San Francisco, some neighborhoods are starting to fill in here. Um, and even in Marin, you can start to see uh, where there is uh, higher income in this area. Um, so you can kind of see uh, that uh, Marin probably probably the highest income is probably in this area um, or Sausalito there's some areas um, but basically Marin County is in this area here so uh, but uh, you do have some uh, kind of wealth that sprawls out into the suburbs here um, but it's probably mainly mainly concentrated right here over in Sausalito um, and also uh, along in this area. Um, so where is that exactly on the map? Uh, you can zoom in here and start to see. So this was Sausalito right in here uh, and then other parts in back in here. So basically we saw that there's kind of a, kind of a boat area in here. You can see that this is the peninsula. This is the Bay, uh, Golden Gate Bridge uh, and some other things. Uh, but basically you can kind of get an idea for this. It's a little bit awkward for some reason, but... Uh, Quite hilly, quite nice area. Uh, so perhaps, probably a lot of this wealth is coming in on in this area, right, and right in here. Um, so if you look at the map uh, that we had here, you can zoom in and kind of see what we're looking at. Unfortunately, I can't quite twist this map, but you can see the areas, and we even got kind of a suburban area on this little island here right and then there's kind of this patch in here and then kind of the forefront of this area and then even into mill valley um reed and paradise city so uh let's look at 
let's look at that area in particular so you can see this little island looked like it was doing pretty well right and then some of this other area in here so it's kind of hard to see everything but you can kind of get an idea uh, in general for what's going on so I'm kind of going to debate some of this uh, wealth here. You know, part of it is easy access to the freeway, uh, access to San Francisco, uh, and some other things. Um, you know, it, it just, this Paradise City looks pretty good to me because you got this road here that heads out here. You can get over to the East Bay, and you can also get into the city. Kind of secluded, kind of private and interesting. Um, there's this Harbor Point and some things, but uh, Sausalito... Uh, you can see there's kind of not as wealthy uh, next to it, uh, but kind of some generally wealthy areas right in here. So I'm going to move down here into San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco is a lot more complicated, I would say. Um, however, uh, you know, like Pacific Heights neighborhood um, and right here in Golden Gate Park, you can see in general this is pretty wealthy all in here um, with even a couple blocks heading in here. Uh, the really nice part about the San Francisco map is that there's these pockets of wealth. There's kind of the big areas, you could say, this area here, and then kind of the downtown area, and then even the south of Market uh, Street area right in there. Um, but uh, these areas are the primary ones in San Francisco that most people consider um, as pretty wealthy. You just kind of see some poor stuff heading in here, um, just uh, near Market Street kind of near, near downtown. I probably should have zoomed in in Marin, um, but you can see here uh, some more of the detail of this map. It's really great. Uh, you can kind of just see these neighborhoods um, right downtown. And uh, this area in particular is interesting. It's kind of up in the hills. Uh, it's kind of getting into Castro and uh, Noe Valley and some other thing things um, but you can also see uh, way back into here um, that there is some others kind of like out, almost outside the city um, up in Forest Hill and St. Francis um, looking pretty uh, good as well uh, but as you back out um, and you look at the major areas you can kind of see that uh, Right near Golden Gate is pretty much the wealthiest area uh, in San Francisco and one of the wealthiest places in the world. Um, so uh, Presidio Parkway right along there um, and just uh, kind of along you know Union Street and uh, heading into Pacific Heights right in here. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in here for the uh, Marin County area. So you can kind of see... Uh, that yeah this area is looking pretty good right in here um, and then there's some pockets in here with Sausalito kind of being strange where you have this little mix of this pocket right in here that's doing in the top 1% um, and Mill Valley doing pretty well as well uh, so after Marin and San Francisco is San Mateo um, and then Santa Clara so we're gonna look at those next so San Mateo is a little bit interesting. We got Foster City over here, um, and then San Mateo. Uh, but you can see San Mateo Park, uh, Hillsboro, uh, Burlingame. Uh, it does. It is pretty wealthy here. But the debate about this is that you're really up in the hills. Um, you are closer to, you know, the the hills here, which has a lot of forest. Um, there's not a whole lot of water to see, and there's not a whole lot of water to be close to, unless you're, of course, in Redwood Shores or possibly Foster City. But these these are pretty built-in houses, not too new. Um, I mean, they're they're very new houses, um, and not kind of classy in terms of uh, some of the wealth that you might think. So, uh, basically, if you look at this carefully, San Mateo probably the wealth heads into here, which is Atherton and uh, basically uh, Redwood City and Stanford area. So this is Palo Alto. Uh, you can see quite a wealthy area. You know, there is just a lot of jobs in these areas. Um, and you can see Mountain View kind of pulling in here. Mountain View is a really fun little city. Uh, and it is kind of a little bit poorer. This is kind of near El Camino Real. Um, 
um, we're heading down into the South Bay. But uh, basically, San Mateo is up further there. So I would say, you know, San Mateo is nicer because it's closer to the airport um, and some other factors. Uh, but uh, basically, you know, it's still not as nice as Marin and San Francisco, obviously, and those are wealthier uh, and more desirable places to live. Um, but there are, you know, sometimes jobs back in here um, and on the peninsula, and it is kind of nice to be closer to the forest um, out in this, uh, you know, San, San Pedro County Park and so on, you know, this area is um, and you can see Half Moon Bay um, doing pretty well as well out here. Um, but uh, San Mateo, uh, that's kind of what that's kind of what this is. So basically, San Mateo, and then heading into Santa Clara um, is the next kind of major area. So basically, uh, Santa Clara is actually even further south here. So Santa Clara, is Sunnyvale, and then you get Cupertino. And then you're starting to get into Santa Clara. So uh, for some reason, it doesn't show up super, super wealthy here. But you can kind of see some purple areas um, kind of over in Cupertino and up in the hills. So I don't know why. Uh, now, this is per capita. So also Santa Clara County, this is the county. So Santa Clara County does include other cities here. Um, and you can kind of see San Jose. Uh, starting to show up here on the South Bay. Um, but actually, a lot of the wealth being kind of up near the hills, um, up near Los Gatos, um, and then out towards uh, Santa Cruz. So really, in the Bay Area, a lot of this a lot of this wealth is not down, down in the center of town. Now, I would say this makes for a bad, you know, a lot of these people are commuting to work, um, and their jobs are could be quite far. Um, you know, it's there are some, uh, you know, most of the if you look at the industry map um, of the Bay Area, if we zoom out here and we look at where we're looking at here, kind of on the South Bay. We zoom out even further, so we see that you know the industry is basically in here, uh, in the South Bay, and. There's also just industry along us, along the waterfront, but the wealth is all here. So you pretty much have a commute. You know, it's it's maybe a commute of it shows seven miles here, um, but you know it can take it can take a good thirty minutes, an hour, um, just to get from these hills over to the waterfront. Um, you know, and that's that's kind of a sizable commute. Um, but a lot of people are trying to live up in the hills. Uh, and that's just the way that the wealth is in the Bay Area. So uh, if you zoom back out, we're going to zoom back out here and kind of see where we are. And kind of in the big picture of things, you can kind of see again. Here's San Jose. Again, San Jose. Now, it does get a little bit poorer uh, kind of on the east side of San Jose. You can see that here. Um, and the East Bay in general isn't considered as wealthy as the peninsula, um, you can see Hayward, Fremont, uh, and you get some of the poorest areas here up in Alameda and, uh, you know, heading up into Oakland. Um, but it does get wealthy again, uh, kind of in the suburbs here, uh, over on the other side of the hill. So the interesting thing about this area um, is basically it is really far. So that... <sighs> There's a road that heads out here, and you can kind of see what's going on. So basically on the other side of this is some wealth. Um, there's basically, you know, if you look at if you look at the map here, you're basically talking about this area here, which is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's basically located right in here on this part of the map. Um, so you can see that, and then you can kind of see it up into Hayward. So it's almost like people have evacuated the Bay Area from the East Bay, and the commute times can be even worse out in here. So I don't know how they do it. Um, there isn't a whole lot of businesses and industry along this part. There is a little bit, you can see kind of in here and in here. Um, 
and actually that's pretty significant. There, there is a pretty significant amount of work uh, in the East Bay, but most of that is heading up into Oakland and Berkeley area, right? Um, so uh, it is kind of a debate, um, and you can see that Berkeley Hills right here um, is pretty much the closest they got up in, and then up in Piedmont. Um, and even that is kind of getting a little bit like San Mateo in the sense of like, you know, you, what do you, what's the advantages of living here? You know, the Oakland airport is actually relatively far compared to the San Francisco airport to San Mateo. Um, and, you know, it's just, there's different, um, different debates. So I can show you the subway map, which would be probably interesting to see. Uh, so I would say the Bay Area transport system is not good at all. Um, one of the key mistakes is that you can't really get out here uh, to Marin. There's just no train that gets over there. Um, and uh, there is, this is the BART. Uh, there's also a regular train that runs up uh, up and down the peninsula and some other areas. Um, but you can see you can get out to Antioch here. Um, and then you can get down to uh, Berryessa in North San Jose um, and San Francisco International Airport. So according to the data, <clears throat> uh, Portillo Valley, California is the wealthiest per capita place in all of California. Um, and basically, you see that on a map here, that's actually heading into here. So you can kind of see where we're at on this map, right? So you got that, that point um, is basically right here where the other bridge is. And if you look at the other map, you can kind of see where we're at. So this is this bridge, and it's basically hidden Portillo Valley's right here, right? So that's the wealthiest area, and it's kind of like Palo Alto. So it's not even really it's considered part of San Mateo County. Um, so really, San Mateo County is quite large, um, but, you know, it's uh, part of what's... So you can see Atherton uh, is basically number two. Um, I can show you where that is on the main map here. So if you see here, that other place was right over here, and this is Atherton. So we basically have, um, you know, kind of a pretty suburban, dense suburban area uh, and pretty wealthy. So basically, um, you know, most of the jobs being right in here. Um, and you can see, you know, this is basically... Uh, close to Mountain View area and a lot of, uh, you know, NASA and some other places. Uh, but uh, basically you got um, some work all the way along here. So commute time being a little bit better, probably, um, you know, if you're back up in the hills here, you know, you still got quite a ways to go. You probably drive this road right into work every day. You can see this road here. Let me turn on the road so you can see some of the roads. Um, but yeah, so you can basically drive 84 into work if you're coming up from uh, Portillo Valley. But uh, but basically Atherton is right along 82, uh, and you can see right there. Uh, so next I'm going to go to Hillsboro, California, um, and you'll see here where that is. So that's basically way up here, uh, more in traditional San Mateo area, pretty close to the airport, right? So... Uh, and this is basically the third wealthiest. So you can see, you know, basically what's going on here. Um, there's probably a lot of jobs right in here. Um, you can kind of see what the, that area is right off of 101. So it's not too bad of a commute and maybe, you know, a pretty desirable place to live kind of up in the hills a little bit. Um, pretty close to 280 if you needed uh, and some other things like that. So the nice part about the 280 is that if you take 280 into San Francisco, it takes you right in here. It kind of jumps you right in into downtown. Uh, so that's pretty close, but still, it can take quite a little ways you know, driving from Hillsboro all the way over here. And people do this kind of commute all the time, which is kind of crazy. Um, so I think that you know we got to look at uh, much shorter commutes, um, maybe in the order of a couple miles at most, uh, to make it really make sense. Um, so next in line is Hidden Hills, Los Angeles. So let's just look at Hidden Hills just because it is ranked up here so highly. Um, and we can see where that is. So it's going to fly us over to Los Angeles, but Hidden Hills, California. And press enter. And 
It'll take us all the way down to LA and to LA. Let's so we go. So Hidden Hills being pretty good off here. So this area uh, kind of is pretty hidden, <laughs> I would say. Uh, quite far uh, from LA. Um, so I don't know why this place is so wealthy, but it is. So uh, it's interesting just to see, you know, uh, these kind of areas up in the hills kind of are becoming uh, pretty pricey. I would say it's a debate. Um, you know, like when we look at the wealth map uh, for all of California, you know, when you start to compare uh, northern, north the Bay Area uh, versus you know, Santa Barbara, LA, you can only see a couple areas in LA that look wealthy, right? So, and that being like West Hollywood and a place like Hidden Hills. So you can see Hidden Hills shows up out there, but uh, Hollywood area up in the hills, Santa Monica, that being pretty wealthy, and then up here in Long Beach. And again, it's a debate, right? It might be nicer to live over here in Long Beach, but maybe not as family oriented. So it's a debate in terms of where is wealthy, certainly even in California. And you can see here in LA, um, it's kind of a similar kind of thing, except where you do got some beach areas uh, are down here in Laguna Beach and then up here in Ventura and Santa Monica. So the Bay Area map isn't very precise unless you really zoom in. Now, one of the awesome things about this map is that they also have a rent map on this. So if you zoom out, you can do rent prices. Now, um, it will change everything to rent prices and then I can load it up as an interactive map. And then you start to see a whole different picture of how the Bay Area works. So um, it is interesting to see, uh, you can see basically that rent prices are pretty pricey in some of those same wealthy areas, but not totally true. So it's not, if you were to look at this, you know, you can see uh, maybe Marin is a little bit more generous area uh, in terms of rent prices. Uh, and certainly uh, the East Bay being pretty cheap and parts of San Jose looking pretty good as well. So one thing that always surprises me is downtown San Jose is pretty nice. Um, and it's pretty surprising that people don't just live downtown. Um, but you can kind of see, I'm going to load up the rent specifically in San Francisco so you can see details here. So when you compare these two maps of San Francisco, you got the rent map and then you got the actual household income map. And you can see that the rent kind of thins out in a place like this here, right? And then its income is still pretty high. So you have like renters kind of coming in on some of these areas. Um, and it is interesting to see... I wish I could get it right over so you could see, but basically, you know, the rent map looks better and sometimes, and sometimes the uh, household income map looks better. So, but it is pretty similar. There's certain areas you can see that rent prices do kind of go up, especially back into here. Maybe some ripoff deals back in there. So you can see the household income isn't that great and yet rent is pretty high. So that's something to be concerned about, right? When you see income not being high and yet rents still getting pretty high. And particularly back in here, rents are getting pretty high, right? And you see rent high there, and then you see rent high, particularly in here, and income's not quite matching up. So something to think about um, where rents and income both matches up. Uh, so the East Bay is a very important case study because, well, I'm interested in living there personally. My sister lives there and some other things. I have an aunt and uncle and stuff like that. Uh, but basically, you can see that there definitely is a problem in a place like East Bay uh, in terms of rent. It's just the rent is way out of bounds with the income. So you have incomes being very low and you have rent still being pretty high. So definitely not matching up in these here where we did see some, uh, you know, it's basically 
you know, you, you almost are forced into living out in the suburbs in some senses. And that's what's kind of happening here, I think. They're building more and more houses outside of the Bay Area. And then people are kind of commuting into the Bay Area. So you can see income being pretty high for this area. So let's let's zoom out a little bit here. Let's zoom out a little bit into the East Bay. And I'll zoom out here on the rent one as well. So you can kind of see that the rent income, this is income right here, and this is rent income and rent. So basically the rent is getting quite high in some areas um, and it's just not so great, uh, particularly in these other neighborhoods. So the interesting th point to make is that perhaps in the highest income areas the rent might be kind of fair in terms of uh but in the lower income areas the rent is definitely not fair so basically what you see is that household income in general the rent the rents are it's really per area and you got to look at your area in specific and I'll post both of these links in the video uh, so you can see but as you head out the incomes and the rents seem to be a little bit more fair so there's certain areas where in your and that's kind of what's going been happening in the East Bay so this whole area Walnut Creek San Ramon Dublin they've been building lots of houses out here and as a result, the rents are a little bit more fair uh, with the income, but you have to drive so far into the bay. So that's why I really question you know, the people that have to drive this far into work. Are you really, something seems wrong there. So there's a lot of need for uh, new uh, office space and work uh, essentially in these areas. So this is the rent image here, and you can see you got a lot of wealth being coming in over here so and on this side of the bay if we zoom out here I think we we're looking at LA a moment ago but in the Bay Area you're basically talking the Bay Area right here right and this mountain range is quite significant let me turn off the roads well let's keep them on actually so as you see here there's not a whole lot of ways these are pretty high speed roads 680 and whatnot you know you can go pretty fast and get to where you need but once you get into the bay area this really could slow down quite a bit um, and i think there's even traffic jams quite a bit back into here um, you can look at a traffic map which we probably should do um, for the bay area um, so what i did here is i loaded up typical traffic for monday around 9 a.m and you can see basically where the traffic problems are um, you know this is all heading in to the airport you can see you got traffic jam on both sides of the freeway um, on 101 there sometimes you have it only on one way and you can see not the other right so you can see this is heading pretty bad traffic so we got people probably commuting you know quite far in to get into the bay area here and this is this is 9 a.m in the morning and we got you know five miles of traffic back then so on a tuesday looking even worse um and then you can see wednesday looking pretty bad worse than you know, on a Wednesday, we have even a lot of traffic kind of showing up in here. Um, and then we got Thursday being pretty bad, actually the worst day. One of the worst days, yeah, you can see just solid traffic for almost 20 miles here on 880. So just forget East Bay traffic. And then Friday looking pretty good, actually, not about like Monday so it's almost like people are only working Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday they try to work and then a Saturday and a Sunday looking pretty good overall Sunday Sunday looking the cleanest so let's just go to uh, 5 p.m. 
see how bad we are. Uh, 530 being really bad. So the evening traffic being absolutely terrible. So I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this Monday traffic, but South Bay, I mean, you know, that's just, uh, the, the, I mean, this, again, this is like 10, the, the mile indicator is down here. This is, you know, 10, 20 miles of traffic. Tuesday looking absolutely terrible. So heading home at the five o'clock time. So it's almost like, you know, the time, the start time, is uh, quite a bit different here. Now heading home, you can see the traffic jams being back on 580. You know, and even this, right? This is just terrible, right? Out here, <laughs> this is so far from the Bay Area, and yet you still have so much traffic. So, and this is, uh, you know, so you just almost don't even drive 580. Um, but, and also the East Bay. So it's 101 is looking terrible. You know, 280 looks pretty good overall most days, but let's look at Wednesday. Wednesday getting even worse. Um, it's just backed up solid on 101. Forget 101. So, oh my God. So, I can't believe how bad 101 is. Uh, it's just so bad. Um, yeah, and even here you can see backed up. Just solid heading south and north. This is north here. This is south 880. Forget going north on 880. So Friday. And then let's look at Saturday. I'll clean up everything. Saturday's pretty bad evenings. So evenings can be pretty bad, actually, even on the weekends. Uh especially the the bay bridge here heading from oakland to san francisco you got saturday and sunday traffic so yeah it's just it's it's actually worse on the weekends uh the the bridge there so yeah it's 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 pretty much the same one day is actually being one of the better days uh so you know i mean there's a lot of things to look at um, including uh, household income and other factors, uh, especially in the Bay Area with the commute times. So uh, I hope this has really helped you understand what's going on in the Bay Area in terms of uh, income and uh, transportation um, and also just the rents. So there's just so many different places. Um, I would say take a look at everything, you know, and I think I messed up this thing here a little bit. Uh, let me try to fix this here. Yeah, so, uh, but basically the place and the county is different. Um, and then I sorted this by per capita income, and then you can see kind of the graph here. So basically, you know, these first few cities, uh, Atherton, Richfield, Hillsborough, Hidden Hills, Woodside, Los Altos Hills. You know, once you get past in here, um, it does kind of change and you get, um, I mean, it's still very wealthy, um, but it's just different. So I actually kind of prefer this per capita income for the county as more helpful because you can kind of see Marin kind of shines here. And you can see it doesn't really show Marin uh, in specific, but the per capita income per county is important because you got a lot of people in the county. Sometimes the city can be small and then knows but Los Angeles being at the bottom here um, but again this isn't a whole lot um, you know but you can see Marin doing pretty well San Francisco San Mateo Santa Clara and the others so I hope you really enjoyed this study of the San Francisco Bay Area and wealth in the Bay Area um, it's certainly interesting to see uh, what's going on um, and kind of get your own feel try to take a look at the maps zoom in zoom out take a look at everything uh, let me know what you think Hope it's helped you out. See you. Please like and subscribe.